everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge, and this is Cruise Peruse, episode number 145, boys and girls. Man, oh man, it is a dreary-ass looking Thursday. And, you know, boys and girls, it's no Thursday without some sports ball news. And that's right. The NFL has went ahead and announced what they're going to do with Miles Garrett's indefinite suspension. Uh, they're going to uphold it. They're going to uphold that indefinite suspension. Despite the fact that, yeah, there were talks today that came out that Miles Garrett stated, you know, Mason Rudolph was saying racial slurs to the guy. And, you know, my buddy and I actually joked about this right after the game. I was like, dude, I bet money. All right, Mason Rudolph said some really fucked up racist shit. And my buddy replied back, like, yeah, probably the N-word with the hard R. I'm like, ah, fuck. All right, if that's the case, then you're fucked. But, of course, Mason Rudolph comes out, vehemently denies it, like the fuck boy would. Although it's not to say that, you know, he, he made the racial slurs. I don't know. All I know is that this motherfucker is getting zero suspensions for instigating this entire fucking shit. All right? Not the racial slurs, motherfuckers. What I'm talking about is a goddamn helmet yanking and the foot on the crotch and balls. So, yeah, Mason Rudolph, you're not completely fucking innocent here. So that still that narrative still drives me insane. Like, ah, oh, Mason Rudolph is, is innocent, man. There's nothing wrong with what he did. Like, what? What? He fucking yanked the guy's... He tried to fucking yank the guy's helmet off. Now, the opposition did a better job at it. You know, not trying to defend Miles Garrett, but the act of... The act of him, you know, ripping off Mason Rudolph's helmet. Well, it was like, it was elementary. It's like, oh, shit. It's like, Miles has done this before. <laughs> but, yeah, you also had another... Uh, Another cat mixed in that incident. Pouncey. So Pouncey gets his game suspension down from three to two. Which, all right, all right, if you want to suck off the Steelers, fine by me. But the fact that you haven't given any fucking games for Mason Rudolph is astounding. And you know what? As a fucking salty little hater ass bitch, you know what I hope? Oh, Mason Rudolph continues to trend downward. I hope he has a fucking terrible rest of the year and throws more fucking picks than goddamn touchdowns, all right? Fuck bitch boy Mason Rudolph. Can't stand that bitch-ass motherfucker. Fuck that guy. Fuck Mason Rudolph. Man, I thought my hatred for the uh, for the fucking Steelers were gone with Rapisburger out the way, but boy, oh boy, here we are at it again. Mason fucking Rudolph. Jackass extraordinaire. Seems like a real fucking cuntbag, <laughs> that guy. Probably, uh, you know, coming from the school of Rapisburg. Rapisburger. Whatever. Rapisburg, Rapisburger. Doesn't fucking matter. All right, the village that Ben has set up is Rapisburg. Because it's named after, after him, Rapisburger. Vehemently denying everything. Oh, I didn't do anything. I'm, I'm, I'm an innocent guy. You're a fucking asshole is what you are. Fucking prick. Seriously, man. Like, all these fucking nonsense talks from the apologists. Like, ah, stop. And then, of course, you got the Cleveland fans. Like, oh, Miles Garrett is not Stop! No, he wasn't! Stop it! I like the Browns, but never, never within the last week have I said Miles Garrett is innocent. I have said flat out, dude's a fucking dumbass for costing his team the last fucking seven weeks of this regular season. He's fucked the team, okay? I don't want to hear anything about it. Miles Garrett isn't innocent at all. But the cause of him doing that shit, you know, I fucking look at Mason Rudolph like, you're not fucking innocent, motherfucker. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say. You, know, you got fucking apologists everywhere on both sides. It's absolutely pathetic. But you hear, you hear pathetic sports arguments all the time. You do. You hear it everywhere. Every fucking discipline of sports, you hear it everywhere. Like the NBA. Oh, the Clippers are the best team in... The, the Clippers aren't the fucking best team in the fucking NBA right now. What the fuck? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's all about the postseason. All right, but historically, the Clippers haven't done shit. Oh, but Kawhi. Yeah, Kawhi. Okay, Kawhi. Yeah, everyone keeps saying Kawhi Leonard. All right, dude. I admit, he's having a great season, relatively speaking, when he's on. But all those load management shit, all right? And the way 
Paul George is going to be fucking looked as a proverbial fucking choker. He still has that choker look, all right? That game against the Celtics yesterday, the Clippers versus Celtics in the Staples Center, our home, by the way, the Lakers' home, I was more impressed at the Celtics than I was with the Clippers. The Clippers have told me more than ever that their bench is arrogant as fuck. I mean, look at Patrick Beverly fucking flopping around, turnovers galore. Awful. Just absolutely awful. And you got Paul George getting fucking crossed up by Jason Tatum to send the game into overtime. Familiar feelings? Yeah. Yeah. PG-13's career is basically getting crossed up and getting the fucking shot at him. So yeah, Clippers win it in overtime. But in my eyes, man, I really think this Clippers team is overrated as fuck. I really think it is. I think this team probably gets to a conference championship game and then lose. Because holy shit, it, like, they don't really look all that good. Okay, cool, you got Kawhi Leonard. That's fantastic. Your bench looks fucking minuscule. And not in terms of size, in terms of mentality. It's such a cruise, like cruise along mode right now with the Clippers that you think you're going to be able to just switch it on in the playoffs? That's not how this shit works. You got to get that aggression going. And that's, listen, I'm a Lakers fan. Of course I'm fucking saying all this shit. Oh, he's a fucking Lakers. He just hates the Celtics. Of course I fucking hate the Celtics. Why the fuck? I hate the Celtics, yes. Also hate the Clippers. Oh, he's just a fucking Clippers hater. Yeah. Of course I am. <laughs> I'm a Lakers fan. Never gonna fucking like the Clippers. But the fact that they are getting overinflated as like this fucking great fucking team, the best team in the NBA. Oh my god, they're amazing. Like, no, they're not. They haven't been all that impressive. And people keep brushing aside the regular season like it's nothing. Hey, guess what? October, November, that shit actually kind of matters in terms of how many wins you can accumulate early on. And that way, it fucking translates into a little bit ease of schedule, ease of playing in January. That's no calculation, son. You think the Lakers are just like fucking pounding these numbers for fun? No. They know flat out, like because they haven't been to the playoffs in like six fucking years, that they have to fucking try. They got to get it their all. And you know what? I love it. You got all these fucking analytics nerds, all these fucking media heads sucking off the Clippers. Like, oh, load management is fucking brilliant. Uh, all right, dude. Uh, you, listen, you, you've been you've been fucking shitting on LeBron for load management. Then now you're fucking sucking off Kawhi. Get your fucking shit straight, man. Like what the fuck? And guess what, dude? The Clippers aren't even the best team in the NBA right now. Like, what are they good at? Ah, uh, probably like bang average on a lot of good things, like top ten, maybe top fifteen in certain categories. But shit, man. I look at the top of the NBA right now. Still very very much a wide open race as to who's going to make it into the conference final and eventually who's going to make it into the finals and guess what man the the los angeles lakers are on top I, I can't stand you motherfuckers that are denying this los angeles uprise in the lakers not the fucking clippers that's not a goddamn la team i'm gonna tell you that flat out every goddamn time i can they're more of an anaheim team they don't belong in fucking Southern California, downtown LA, in the Staples Center. They don't belong there. They're not Showtime. They're not fucking anything. The Lakers are coming back up to prominence. And yeah, it's only 14 games in the season. You can't take everything too seriously. Shut the fuck up. Fuck you. Guess what, man? I'm going to enjoy these lot, like next few fucking months of the Lakers just tearing asses apart. Okay? Because we've been, we've been shit for so long. We've been shit for so long. I'm going to enjoy this number one fucking seeding right now. It's fantastic. And you know what else is fantastic? The Boston Celtics right at number two overall. I love that shit. I do. I absolutely do. Like I said, I hate the Celtics, but there is no... You can't write the NBA history without the Celtics label. You just can't. You just can't. Over what? A dozen? Over a dozen championships have been determined by those two teams competing? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Come on now. You can't fucking tell me that rivalry is nothing. Like, it, it's it's the reason why the NBA came alive, okay, in the 80s. It was dead, and then it came alive. And now we're, we're seeing both teams rise up, cream on top. 
I love it. I absolutely love it. I want both teams to make it to the NBA Finals where the Lakers hopefully win their 17th. Now, the third and fourth team is very curious because you have the Milwaukee Bucks, third overall, and the Denver Nuggets, fourth overall. And yeah, there are all these teams on the bottom. The Clippers, oh, shut up. I already, I already had this whole fucking diatribe about the Clippers. The third and fourth team, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Denver Nuggets are two very curious teams that I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on. Because if Giannis is on this positive trajectory and he is only going to get better, holy fuck. Holy fuck. Can you imagine a, a much better, much improved than last year MVP, most valuable player in the league, Giannis Antetokounmpo? Can you imagine if he rises his level, even marginally? Holy shit. This dude would be unstoppable. He would reign the East. And... I'll tell you what, man, the Denver Nuggets, young guys, they're all coming together now. They're coming together. They're, you know, whatever uh, strife they had in the early years of trying to close out games, that, that, that kind of shit's kind of gone, man. These young guys are turning into those closers, into those key pieces. And obviously, the Nuggets are nothing without Jokic. The Joker is just unbelievable. I mean, I watched this guy live in Denver last year and I gotta tell you that was a treat that was a fucking treat this dude can do it all he can shoot threes he can post up he can defend he can set the screen I mean he can, he can fucking do it all I, the, Jokic is fucking badass as fuck I love it and I hope for their sakes they can step up to that next level I really do hope so I feel for those Denver fans man you're stuck with the fucking Broncos who've been on a proverbial downhill ride for quite some time now but hey maybe the Nuggets might be on the other ones. you know speaking of a team that was on the downfall let's talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs for a bit here so I went to the Toronto Maple Leafs versus Vegas Golden Knights game which funny enough on the podcast episode on Tuesday that I released on the uh, Sky Lounge YouTube page and the SoundCloud app if you guys have that uh, I went to that game, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the yeah, Vegas Golden Knights again. I just took them and said the rappers like an idiot. But went to that game and the Golden Knights spanked the Maple Leafs 4-2. to And now, don't let the scoreline fool you. This game wasn't as close as you would have thought. And after the game, when the Knights win... And it solidifies the Maple Leafs losing streak to six. The very next morning, the Toronto Maple Leafs go ahead and fire Mike Babcock, head coach. And I thought, okay, this this is a very knee-jerk but very delayed thing here. Because it felt like for a long time the fans have been vocal and adamant that they don't want Babcock in anymore. He's just been very stagnant in terms of what he's been able to do with the team. And so, now they're bringing in their AHL Toronto uh, Marlies head coach, uh, Sheldon Keith. And the ultimate hope for the Leafs fans is, hey, maybe should, maybe they can start winning some games. I don't know. But in my eyes, man, it, it, it could be tough. I Listen, it, it could be really fucking tough, man. New coaching sometimes don't really get in stride early on. They don't. It gets hard. And let's not forget the players. You still have the same players on your roster. You do. And lest we forget, you got more than 44 fucking million dollars tied up with four different players. Cumulatively, four players cost you 44 million fucking dollars. That's more than half your goddamn salary cap. For four guys. That kills that, that kills any kind of maneuverability in the roster spot. So for the Maple Leafs, it's do or die in the next two seasons or you're fucked. I, I, that, that's really it. There's really no other way to say it. All right? And I don't feel good saying it. I don't. I want the Maple Leafs to do well. I like the Maple Leafs. I tell people all the time, they're the best away fans in T-Mobile Arena. I love seeing the Toronto Maple Leafs games. The fans show out in numbers. They show out in voices. When they chant, go Leafs, go, Nan, you know, Knights ch chant back, go Knights, go. And it's fun. It's fun in a very 
you know, light competitive way. Of course, the product on the ice is super competitive, and generally speaking, with uh, maple leaves, the Golden Knights keep it pretty clean. They keep it pretty clean. They play a really fast game. Almost always, it's a high scoring game, fun times, and I really do wish nothing but the best. Uh, for the Maple Leafs. Now, where does Ma Mike Babcock go from here? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe Minnesota moves on from uh, Bruce uh, Boudreau. Uh, Boudreau, Boudreau, I don't care. I don't give a fuck who he is. He sucks. All right, the, the Minnesota Wild head coach fucking sucks. I don't think he's going to be around forever. It, it's really left up to the team who's willing to you know splash cash for that next new guy, next big guy, big name. Who the hell is it going to be? Is it going to be San Jose if they move off of uh, DeBoer? Uh, I, I don't know. But Babcock is probably going to have a lot of suitors, but I doubt he comes back to the coaching game early. I, I feel like he might take a year off, you know, take a sabbatical, you know, get some thoughts, you know, uh, laid out there. Or who the hell knows? He's a fucking workhorse and he just might continue to get jobs. It's like Jose Mourinho. That's right, boys and girls. We'll, we'll cap it off with some Premier League action, Premier League news, because we got the Premier League coming back this weekend. So, of course, it's very appropriate to talk about this subject. Jose Mourinho. You know, I talked about it a couple of days ago, uh, you know, at the Vegas Golden Knights game, right before the Vegas Golden Knights game, actually, that Jose Mourinho has been appointed as the new manager for Tottenham Hotspur, and because of that, Mauricio Pochettino was fired. Okay. So, Pochettino, I see, probably headed over to Germany or some shit. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it if they uh, found a spot for Pochettino there in the German League, Italian League, or maybe he goes back to the Spanish-speaking uh, country of Spain. Who the hell knows? But Jose Mourinho is back, and thing is, I fucking hate Jose Mourinho. I can't fucking stand him. And now he goes to a club that I truly detest and hate and have no fucking respect for. Holy shit. It's a recipe for pure hatred. This is a recipe for pure hatred. I fucking can't stand Jose. And I hope his future endeavor in Tottenham is nothing but failure. Because this jackass goes ahead and says, oh, you know, back in my old teams, I did a lot of things not so great. But this thing, you know, this time I'm going to make new mistakes. Dude, you're going to make new mistakes? Like, what the fuck? Okay, man. So, you're going to finish outside the top ten. Uh, you know, settle for not winning cups because that's what you tend to do in, in your, your regular mistakes. But I wish nothing but ill will towards Jose Mourinho. Uh, I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> I'm not going to fucking sit here and pretend I like Todd. Okay? That's just, that's just tough. That's, that's, that's just bullshit. That's just bullshit. I'm not going to feed you people. Bullshit. Because every, everything in life already does that shit. Alright? I want to give you some honesty. Alright? And when I'm giving you honesty, it's the fact that Tottenham Hotspur isn't worth shit. And Jose Mourinho, hopefully he fails. And all the Tottenham fans can just shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear about this shit anymore. I don't. This is the greatest Premier League manager. Really? He's the greatest Premier League manager. Is that right? Okay. It's like people forget Alex Ferguson existed. Like, he didn't exist. Like, what the fuck? What's wrong with you people? Like, I, I don't know, man. I, I, just, I just find this, you know, hysteria culture just insane. It drives me nuts. And trying to make sense of certain things people say. Like, oh, he's the greatest. How? How? Jesus. I don't know, man. Just people, people in terms of sports ball always irritate me. Always will. I, this, is, this is the cool thing with sports, right? I mean, you're going to get annoyed by stupid-ass opinions. Because that's what sports is generally predicated on. Opinions. Obviously, you have on the field, on the court, on the pitch, whatever the fuck, you know, product on there, but you also have analysis, which is all opinions. So, boys and girls, I'll go ahead and end it there. Follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. Now, fuck off. Oh, my God.